A long time ago, there was a young adventurer somewhere in a parallel universe, and his name was... Well, we're not sure about his real name. All we know is that his nickname was the Swordbreaker. Once, when he was in a tavern spending his lost money on a pint of beer, he noticed two men at the next table, arguing about something. One of them stood up, smashed a bottle against the table, and stabbed the other one with the jagged edges. The next minute the villain was gone. The adventurer rushed up to the dying man. In his dead throes, the man grabbed onto the hero's clothes, and, just before breathing his last, handed him a scroll. Later, when the hero shut himself in the room he'd rented for the night, he unrolled the scroll, which turned out to be an old map with a castle. The adventurer's face lit up. He was broke and badly needed money. So the next day, he set out on a great journey, full of dangers and chance encounters. <sighs> Hello! We're going to play Swordbreaker, shall we? Okay, after a long and tiring journey, the hero approached the huge ancient castle. From the look of it, the castle had been abandoned many centuries ago, but something gave him a mysterious feeling he wasn't alone. The adventurer saw an open window on the second floor. Which way to go? Walk through the gates or climb through the window? Let's take the window. It took the hero a lot of effort to climb up to the second floor in his armor. Now, he was in the guard room, just above the castle gates. It looked like there had been a fight there, dead warriors, rather than the skeletons were scattered on the floor. Suddenly, one of the skeletons moved and tried to stand up, raising his long sword. Make a choice now! Should the adventurer take a running kick at him while the warriors on the floor, jump out the window, or wait till he gets up and take it like a man? choose. We'll wait. When the skeleton finally got up, the adventurer raised the sword. Wait! cried the skeleton, leaning on the sword. The hero stopped and looked at the skeleton, bewildered. I am the guard captain of this castle. I can help you avoid the barracks. Unless you'd like to have a chat with my heartless traitor guardsman, that is, you know, one does not simply walk through the barracks, said the old skeleton. Choose. Accept help. Refuse. We'll accept. The adventurer accepted the captain's help, and they walked through the secret door to the armory. armory was a big chamber with weapon racks, armor stands along the walls, apart for the bows, swords, and shields put in order, the armory was a sorry sight. With huge holes in the floor, the adventurer saw two doors, one on the far end of the room and one on the right. Should the hero open the door on the right? Or the one on the other end. Take a look at the weapons. Choose. Okay. We'll go to the end. Behind the door was another armory with shiny suits of armor hanging on the walls. All of a sudden, one of the gauntlets moved. Should the adventurer take a closer look at the armor 
or get a move on, choose. Let's take a look. The hero went up to the strange armor and touched it. Something was glowing inside. The armor stepped from the wall and said, Here, come here, help me. The armor has been nailed to the wall and I can't leave it, said the ghost. Should the adventurer help the ghost in the armor, chop off his head, or run away? Choose. Uh, we'll risk you. Thanks for your help. I owe you, said the ghost and vanished with his armor. Now the adventurer could go on his way. The hero entered a large smithery. There was a hearth, an anvil, and other tools. And Smith says, On the halls, the adventurers saw swords, shields, parts of the armor, and weird long pipes. The blacksmith was an inn. Should the hero walk through the door, or the recreation room, or bang on the strange pipe with a sword? Well, that don't look good. Let's go in the rec room. As he entered the door, the hero saw a sad, bulky man in a blacksmith's apron, sitting on the couch. A large sledgehammer was propped nearby. I need your help, friend. Two days ago, I sent my apprentice to the mine to get some uranium ore, but he hasn't come back yet. He must have taken the wrong turn and got caught by the spider. He must, he might still be alive. If you help me find him, I'll show you way to the engineer. I have commissions from the Interstellar Confederation of building a gazillion warheads. They're losing the war, you see. I won't make it all on my own. So are you in? Um, let's help him. Remember, get to the spider, take the tunnel on the right. Don't touch the spider. Just rescue the boy, come back as fast as you can. Do as I told you, and you might have a chance to survive. The hero went through the door, quickly looked behind him, in front of him was a low tunnel propped with wooden supports and a signboard that said Uranium Mine. The tunnel diverged, forming three smaller ones. Which tunnel to choose? Left, straight ahead, to the right. Okay, left, middle, right. We'll go right. A vast cave of cobwebs. With massive cocoons hanging from the ceiling. Go on, or cut one of them open. Mm -mm. Walk on. As he walked on, the hero heard something move from under the ceiling. Out of the darkness appeared a huge spider along with two small ones. They went down the cobwebs and ran towards the adventurer, the big spider trailing behind the small ones, the jaws wide open. What did the hero do? Kick one of the smaller ones? Spiders aiming at the big one, or cut the small spiders with his sword. Let's kick Shorty. The hero kicked one of the smallest spiders, aiming it right into the leader's mouth. While the big spider was busy choosing on its prey, the second bug attacked the adventurer. Should he cut it in two, or kick it to the far end of the cave? Uh, slash it. The adventurer swooshed the sword again, the other shorty fell apart. Meanwhile, the big spider had finished the smaller one and prepared to attack the hero. What should he do now? At the spider. Do his sword at the spider? Or take a run and strike it with the sword breaker? Let's get it. Sword. The hero took a run and thrust at the spider with all his might, plunging his sword into his skull. A moment later, it fell apart, revealing some nasty slime. He went down the cave and stumbled upon a human skeleton. He must have been here for ages. In his hand, the hero saw a scroll. Maybe he should take a look a look, closer look, or move on. Let's go on. The passage led the hero to the iron gates 
which to the maze of the Minotaur. Surrounded by stone wall, there was no way back now he'd have to enter. The adventurer went into the maze in, made of stone walls covered with plants and moss. Bones falling off warriors were scattered here and there. Too bad the hero didn't have a dog with him. Which way would he go? Left or right? Well, the blacksmith said go to the right. After the wanderings around the maze, the hero found himself in a circular hall with piles of bones, broken weapons, and armor everywhere. This is what the center of the maze. Right in the middle was the Minotaur himself, so, sitting in a wooden throne with a couple of hefty axes in his hands. Should the adventurer try to talk to him or get ready for a fight? Hmm, let's get ready. The adventurer was drawing a sword. The Minotaur threw one of the axes at him. Should the hero dodge the attack, ward it off with the sword, or choose? Let's fend it off. The adventurer waved his sword and managed to ward off the next axe. The Minotaur was furious. He charged toward the hero with his head down, ready to headbutt the adventurer with his horns. But the hero kick should he kick him or strike him? He was striking. In front of him, the Minotaur ran right into him, and a second later his blood and guts were splashing and scattered all over the floor. The monster was defeated. Now we have to get out of here, thought the hero. In the next moment, the hero found himself in a spacious, luxurious room with a magnificent bed next to the wall. This was the secret chamber of Lord Neo, the fourth himself. The adventurer felt a dark vibes in this place. It was as if someone was watching him. What should he do next? Rummage through the wardrobe or something useful or lie down the bed? and take a nap. Let's take a nap. The adventurer lay down on a magnificent bed and fell asleep. In his dream, there was a strange place called Astral World. Once inside, the hero found himself in a spectacular otherworldly room. Suddenly, a beautiful girl appeared before him, out of thin air, beckoning him. Should he approach her? No way. I know you. You're that damned succubus who wasted so many lives in this castle, shouted the hero. Oh, do you? Well then, just give me another reason to kill you, said succubus, smiling at the adventurer. The demoness summoned a whip and gave it a wave. Should the adventurer dash away from it or fend it off with a sword? Warded off. When the adventurer saw the whip coming at him, he waved his sword and cut it off at its end. The next second, he threw his sword at the demoness, but the succubus defiantly moved aside. Now that he lost his sword, what should the hero do? Dash at the demoness and strike her with the sword breaker, or see what she's going to do next? The sword breaker into her flesh, the succubus let her moan, sagged to the floor. When her body began to disappear, the adventurer found himself still lying on the bed. Then he got up and went on his way. The adventurer entered a dark room. In the corner, there was a man with a black armor sitting in the chair. The room didn't have any more doors. In the other corner, he noticed a glowing magic portal. This must be the portal room. Who are you? asked the hero. I'm Sylvester. Of the Knight of the Temple of Fate, it is my job to protect the portal from the necromancers. But I was just looking for them, and for the treasury. Will you let me through? asked the adventurer. Only you could choose your path. 
How did you prove yourself? Did you help? Did you kill a lot? Or maybe you have a yellow streak on your back? I can read you like a book, you know. This room will lead you to your destiny. Prepare yourself. Enter the portal, said the knight. The hero entered the glowing portal, and the reality warped around him. The adventure opened his eyes again and found himself in a small room with a window. This must be one of the castle towers. What kind of trial is that? The hero wondered. Then he heard the knight of the temple of fate. You are brave and kind-hearted, warrior. You have helped many in this castle. I have even spared some in battle. So in the trial you deserve, you will have to face the astral demon that lives in this tower and keeps a kidnapped princess in his, as his prisoner. If you defeat the demon, you will bask in the glory of years to come, said the knight. The next moment, the skies opened, the astral demon with a flaming sword entered the room through the space rift. So should the hero attack the demon or talk? Oh, what an attack. The adventure rushed into attack but some of the mysterious force lifted him in the air and the work of the astral demon and its magic power. As the demon was getting closer and closer, the hero had to decide what to do next. Throw his sword at the monster or wait till he was near. Let's wait. The adventurer waited patiently. The astral demon came closer and when he did, the hero pointed his sword at the demon and crushed his skull with a sword breaker to make sure he was dead. The astral demon started to vanish in the air, the spell was lifted, and the him hero tumbled down on the floor. The adventurer gathered the strength and entered a second room in the tower. Inside he saw an iron door with a huge padlock. Behind the door he heard someone crying. Should the adventurer knock it down? the sword or pick it with a nail. And here's the nail. What if it's a trap? thought the hero and picked up the nail. A couple of minutes later he managed to open the door. He entered the tiny room and saw a gorgeous girl in a magnificent dress lying on the bed. She stopped crying and looked at the adventurer. Who are you? What do you need? she asked cautiously. I've come for you. There's no time to explain. Come on. I have to take you to a safe place, said the adventurer. But I can't leave the room. The Lord Necromomer will find me anyway, she said. Right. Then I'll go and slit the old prince's throat and come back, said the adventurer, and headed for the exit. Wait. Let me give you a blessing, or you won't sustain the necromancer's curse. And by the way, I am Princess Anastasia, she said. Should the adventurer agree? Of course. Guess we work pretty good. Sure, it won't hurt me, said the adventurer. Anastasia whispered something, waved her hands, and then gave him a kiss on the cheek. That was just a preview, she said, blushing. The hero climbed down the spiral stairs and entered the throne room. The necromancer was standing in the middle. I see you've prepared well. My spell had no effect on you, the lord said in surprise. Yes, I know what you're up to, said the adventurer. Oh right, you must have met my captive, the beautiful Anastasia. How do you like her? She's going to be my wife soon, and together we will have such power. You can't even imagine, said the necromancer. Yes, she is good. Too good to be yours, I'd say, so I'll keep her for myself instead. And as for you, take this, the hero cried angrily and attacked the warlock. Meanwhile, the necromancer cast a spell. Should the adventurer rush to the lord or throw his, throw his sword at him? Let's run. The adventurer decided not to waste time and went to the Lord. The necromancer saw it coming and sent lightning bolt at him. But the hero had a narrow escape 
from the charge, who is now ready to attack the warlord with the sword breaker. Should he thrust it at him from the top or knock the lord down? Attack from the top. Tackling. The adventure decided to tackle the necromancer, which took him by complete surprise. The warlock fell on his back, hitting his head against the floor. However, that didn't stop him long, and they struggled on. The lord raised his black dagger, aiming it at the hero's chest, but the adventure grabbed his wrist just in time. Should he turn the dagger around, or hit the warlock with his knee? Let's turn the dagger. The adventure embraced himself for the fight and began twisting the necromancer's wrist. He finally managed to turn the dagger around, grab the handle, and stab the warlock in the heart. The strength left the necromancer and his heart stopped. The adventurer threw the dead body off himself and went for the exit. That's when he thought about the treasury and then remembered the Princess Anastasia. Was it really the diamond he was looking for in the castle? Why would he need a huge gem anyway? The hero opened the door to the tower, saw Anastasia. There was no need to explain. She looked him in the eye, threw herself into his arms, kissing him. The brave adventurer realized no treasure in the world was worth more than true love. He took the princess and led her out the same way he had came to the tower. Or... This is how the story ends of the brave adventurer. The hero brought the princess Anastasia home and married her. They had a splendid wedding and the whole city was invited at the feast. The townsmen celebrated and their new prince glorified his deeds for centuries to come. As for the sword breaker, he was absolutely happy he had found his true treasure after all. Well, wasn't that exciting? I thought that was very good. There were a lot of paths. I liked it. Didn't you, kiddies? Well, on to the next. See you later, kiddies. Bye-bye.